the age of digital disruption and what many have called the e-commerce revolution. We discuss how technology, location, and human capital continues to impact industrial and retail markets. So Ali, um, I'll say that again because I said um. <laughs> ben, so we're hearing a lot today about what's being dubbed as kind of the changing retail environment. What does that mean to you and you know, how's that affecting your clients in today's age? I think it's no secret that retail is being somewhat challenged by e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So everyone has a large e-commerce platform. It's a convenient way to shop. Retail, you know, is all about the vibrancy of the supply chain. So it's about efficiency, speed to market. It's absolutely critical in terms of, you know, where they're located and sort of how they're supplying both their stores and their customers. Having to, A, help clients downsize storefronts. So if we have a client who has multiple stores across Canada, they don't necessarily need to have all of them anymore. Yeah. So it's a lot of conversations about, okay, let's readjust your portfolio, see where you are, yeah. and keep you in the key markets. What's well, funny, when talking to tenant clients five years ago, it was all about how do we provide free shipping, right? And in today's market, it's how do we provide quick shipping? And the consumer has just almost become addicted to speed to market or having that good next day or same day even. You know, gone are the days of just, you know, well, three to five days and I'm prepared to wait for it as long as it's free. It's yeah. all about speed. Yeah. So because of e-commerce, it's enabled clients to reduce their storefront size and actually just have that foot traffic they need, but not necessarily have to spend a fortune on their rent. So we've got a great network of UPS and FedEx and a lot of the international courier companies. So it's about proximity to the hub. And obviously the next day is almost no problem for most of those groups. It's a decision though that companies are having to make in terms of what kind of automation, what kind of investment do I make in my material handling equipment to drive that efficiency. How is transit playing a factor in you know, the retail experience? And All of our key retail nodes in our city are transit connected. Yeah. Young and Bloor, prime example, Queen Streetcar, Yorkdale right off the 401 subway stop right there. I think it's just natural that they've developed along transit lines. So you'll see every single large development is really well located for transit or is a transit-oriented development. So East Harbor, yeah. they're developing their massive large-scale development, over a million square feet of retail for yeah. sure, purely based on the fact that they're going to have new transit stations right there. Industrial estate specifically is the focal point. It's no longer just in the background of the decision. When I got into the business in 2005, it was almost like, okay, we know it's going to cost us money, but let's just try and get it as low as possible rent, and we don't really care where it is as long as it's within a 20-minute drive time of our two or three main customers. Yeah. That was absolutely the conversation at the sea level it's completely changed. It absolutely is a critical part of understanding really the underlying business of what our clients operate in. But there's a bigger conversation around transit. It's really the labor force of the transit is connecting the end user to. You can have the best transit system, but if it connects it to a group of people that can't afford to live in that municipality, then transit's irrelevant. So it's a combination of transit and also the right demographics and affordable housing. Let's say you have a retail space that's not leasing. How can this be turned into something that can probably be beneficial more to the landlord as well as the building. So <laughs> would that be in like terms of like a pop-up or like a short-term space? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, I get you. Yeah, I know in the office world, you know, the WeWorks, you, you pay for that short-term flexibility. Is that the same thing that's happening in retail? Sure, we'll give you seven months, but you're going to pay an ultra premium for it. A really good example is a client of mine called State and Liberty. So they've done a seven month deal to test the market. So they'll be there through the holiday season, through the summer, which is a good time to really understand if the product's gonna work in our marketplace. And then come October, we have to choose to extend for a five year term. Yeah. You know, on the industrial side, it's, you know, how do I get my investment back and my upfront cost? And to set up a sophisticated e comm distribution building is very expensive. So it's about length of term and being able to recapture that investment. So we're seeing most deals 10 to 15 years. For example, Amazon just signed a 1.15 million square foot lease in Caledon, and that was a 15 year transaction. Generally speaking, lease terms are actually getting longer just given the investment groups are making in their supply chain and the upfront cost. There's a lot of different technology that's being implemented, especially in the office world. How is technology being utilized on your side of the business? How's that affecting your clients? A lot of the big ones who, have, who are building mass developments like a Yorkdale Mall or like a well, if you connect to their Wi-Fi, you've enabled them to kind of track your shopping. So they, they know every store you walk into. That way too, they can track, okay, like these stores are doing better than others. This is getting more foot traffic. And then it helps them build longevity of the project and understand, okay, this store does really well. We're gonna keep them here or maybe even move them 
into to a, a different location exactly. that might suit them better, right? Exactly. Technology is absolutely mission critical. Fiber connectivity, big data, blockchain is absolutely part of the supply chain. The automation component in terms of how to keep up with their client demand is absolutely mission critical to their ability to service clients. And so technology and automation is absolutely driving business. Yeah, just a longer discovery process. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah.